Would you please stand for our opening hymn? Son and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we are to pray and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask except through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of Scripture. A reading from Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God saw everything that he made, and indeed, it was very good. The word of the Lord. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all of our world. Out of the mouths of infants and children, your majesty is praised above the heavens. You have set up a stronghold against your adversaries to quell the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your hands, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, what is man that you should be mindful of him, the son of man that you should seek him out? A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. And now I commend to you, God, and to the message of his grace, the message that is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all who are sanctified. I coveted no one's silver or gold or clothing. You know for yourselves that I worked with my own hands to support myself and my companions. In all this, I have given you an example that by such work we must support the weak, remembering the words of the Lord Jesus, for he himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. The word of the Lord.
to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord God. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one. For you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Give to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, but give back to God the things that are God's. In the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. <clears throat> There's an old joke about a man who felt deeply convicted after hearing a sermon on money and the trappings of greed. And so whenever he got home from church, this man wrote a letter to the IRS that said, I just can't sleep knowing that I've cheated on my income taxes and closed as a check for $1,000. He then added, P.S., if I still can't sleep, I'll send the rest. If you are new to St. Michael's, we dedicate the month of October to taking an honest look at how we relate to money. And together we explore what we call extravagant generosity. And when we use this phrase, extravagant generosity, we mean two things. First, this is a statement about who God is. God is extravagantly generous, but it's also a statement about who we are as people created in the image of an extravagantly generous God. Now, this opening joke that I told, you know, I'm well aware whenever I craft these sermons that that joke wasn't really that funny. Uh, I do appreciate some of the courtesy laughter, but the main reason I told the joke was because it reveals something deeply true about how we show up to this conversation. We are mildly conflicted. We want to give, to be extravagantly generous, and to know that we're not just recipients of the church's mission, but vital supporters of that mission. But at the same time, we're also a little ambivalent. And there is always going to be a part of us that wants to know what God considers to be generous enough, or maybe what the rector considers to be generous enough, and then to kind of hold back what we can for ourselves. And so here's the question I want to introduce this morning can we embrace this journey to generosity from a place of love and curiosity and humor and faith and openness and not from a place of fear, skepticism, or defensiveness? In other words, is it possible for something to awaken inside of us so that this conversation about faith and money is both exciting and meaningful, because I know from experience that it absolutely can be. And so to start, let's take a look at today's gospel, where the Pharisees come to Jesus with a very specific question about money. 
Should we pay taxes to Caesar or should we not? And while theirs is more of a political question than it is a theological one, it's still a question about money nonetheless and about what their posture should be with respect to giving. And what I love about Jesus' answer is that he doesn't give them a formula. He doesn't provide a black and white response. But instead, Jesus reminds the Pharisees who they are and whose image they bear because Jesus knows that if they get that right, that the question about money will take care of itself. Give to Caesar that which belongs to Caesar, but give back to God that which belongs to God. Now, the Greek word translated give is more accurately translated to give back or to restore. And so in today's gospel, whenever Jesus takes their coin and examines the coin, Jesus looks and he sees the image of Caesar stamped on that coin. And so he says to the Pharisees, this coin belongs to Caesar, this coin bears his image, and so give it back to Caesar. But then Jesus looks at the Pharisees, and Jesus sees a different image that has been stamped on their soul, an image they no longer see in themselves or each other, and that is the image of God. And it's from that place of seeing that they bear the divine image, of seeing that we bear the divine image that Jesus addresses their question about money. The coin, he says, it's Caesar's. And so give it back to Caesar. But you, you belong to God. You are his. You bear the image of my Father in heaven And so be restored to God. Give yourself back to God. And so whenever we talk about this journey to generosity, what we're really talking about at its core is how to give ourselves back to God fully. The primary reason we talk about money in the month of October here at St. Michael's, please understand The primary reason is not because the church needs your money. Now, I think practically speaking, we all understand that churches don't run on magic, but on the intentional, generous, prayer-soaked commitments of the church's members, and that's just a fact. And when it comes time to build an annual budget, basic mathematics always come into play. But that doesn't mean that getting the math to work the way we want the math to work is the deepest truth behind why I'm preaching this sermon series. Because the deepest truth is always that the church's vocation is to be a place where we increasingly come to see whose image we bear and from that place of insight increase our capacity to give ourselves back to God fully over and over and over again. And so on this journey to generosity, before we even ask the question, how much should we give, there is a prior question we've got to ask, and that's, what do we love? And what is it that we ultimately want? Because here's the thing, I believe that every human being ultimately wants the exact same things. We want joy, we want happiness, fulfillment, connection, we want meaning. But here's the thing, there are two very different views that we've all been exposed to as to how one attains a happy, connected, joyful life. 
there's the view that we inherit from the world in which we live, which would say maximize pleasure, minimize pain, accumulate all that you can, compete with your neighbor, win at all costs, and pursue your own dream irrespective of the common good. And if we follow that particular path, it will lead to a particular outcome. But then there is Jesus's view, which is a different path altogether and which leads to a different outcome and quality of life. And that path has been stated in a variety of different ways. It is more blessed to give than it is to receive. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and everything else will be added unto you. For those who want to save their life will lose it, but those who lose their life for me and for the gospel will save it. You know, Jesus articulated this path in a million different ways, but he's talking about the path of the kingdom. And try as hard as we all do to mesh these two views together. The truth is, is that they are not compatible. Happiness and joy is either found in a life where our chief aim is to give our full heart, soul, mind, and strength to God, or it's found in a life where our chief aim is to possess, achieve, and consume. And just so we're clear, there is nothing wrong with possessing, achieving, and consuming. I possess things, I achieve things, I consume things. These can be wonderful aspects of a human life. But what we don't want to do is buy into the myth that they have the capacity to nourish the human soul over the long run. I mean, right? Cake is absolutely delicious. I highly recommend that you eat a piece of cake on occasion. And unless there is a medical reason why you can't have a piece of cake, there's something a little off if you never have a piece and enjoy yourself. But if it's the only thing we eat, we will get sick and unhealthy. And the same thing is always true whenever we try to feed the human soul on nothing other than money, achieving, possessing, and consuming. And so what this series on generosity is really about is spiritual health so that we can be reminded about what it is that ultimately nourishes the human soul. In fact, the English word generosity is derived from a Latin word, which means of noble birth. When the word generous was used prior to the 17th century, it was always used to indicate that a person belonged to nobility. And part of my goal in this sermon series is to reclaim the original meaning of this word, because theologically speaking, generosity is a byproduct of a noble birth, not in that it's tied to class or race or societal status, but rather to our divine birthright as people created in the image and likeness of God. And when we grow in a life of extravagant generosity, all that happens is that we can form more closely to our design and become more of who God created us to be, sons and daughters of the Most High God. God is generous. And because we are created in the image of this generous God, generosity is our birthright. And so I'm going to end my sermon today with a, a little story. This happened about a week ago. I was having a conversation with my daughter, Annie, who just turned six years old. And she was telling me that whenever she grew up, she wanted to be just like her mom. And so I said, sweetheart, that is a wonderful goal. Your mom's a lovely person. But tell me why. You know, what is it about mom that you admire? And Annie said, well, she gives me snuggles at night, she's kind, she always packs the right snacks at school, 
Uh, she's a teacher, Annie said, and, and I think I want to be a teacher when I grow up because Mama works so hard, but she's also such a good mom at the same time, and I think I want to be a teacher and work really hard and also be a mom. And so I said, sweetheart, that is so good. Your mom is really special. Is there anything else that you admire about your mother? To which Annie replied, well, I also want to be just like mom because I think it is so neat that she got married to somebody who doesn't really work for a living. <laughs> so I replied, sweetheart, I'm at St. Michael's six days a week. You know, what do you think I do? And she said, I think you sit in your office and eat donuts all day. And this, of course, led to a, a long conversation. Um, Annie learned about W-2s and all kinds of things. But um, I'm not going to inform you about the rest of the conversation, but only to say that as I reflect on this interaction, I was touched in a very deep way that Annie did not consider what I do here to be work. In fact, yesterday we celebrated Annie's sixth birthday and her party, at Annie's request, was here on this campus because St. Michael's does not live in the same part of her brain as work, but rather in that part of her brain that thinks of love, delight, family, faith, connection, and meaning. And what I want to leave us with today is that this conversation about faith and money does not have to be about work, and that it's really possible to lean into this conversation and to make a sacrificial gift and to live a sacrificial life in such a way that it enhances our love, our delight, our connection, and above all else, the meaning we crave as human beings. That's the journey we're going to take in the coming weeks and friends, to do this work well is our birthright. Amen. I invite you to stand as together we reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. <clears throat> we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. O God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, we thank you for the parade of witnesses down through the centuries whose faith and generosity continue to provide us a vital legacy of faith and hope. Abraham and Sarah dared to leave the security of their homeland to travel to a land you would show them. Be with us, the people of St. Michael's, as we journey together to become an extravagantly generous people. Gracious God, Moses gave up the wealth and prestige of Pharaoh's court in order to lead his people out of slavery in Egypt into the freedom of the promised land. Help us to know that you alone provide manna and water in the wilderness. 
gracious God. Peter and Andrew left their fishing businesses in order to follow Christ, and in doing so discovered the meaning of true wealth. Like them, we pray that we would give without counting the cost. Gracious God, Zacchaeus, the tax collector, responded to Jesus' gracious welcome by sharing half his accumulated assets with the poor. May we learn to share what we have without expecting anything in return. Gracious God, Mary Magdalene and the other women who followed Jesus shared their wealth to support Christ and his ministry. Give us grace to hold our treasures with open hands and to be gracious and ungrudging in our giving. Gracious God, give us generous hearts. Barnabas sold his land to provide for the needs of the early church. Teach us to walk in the way of Christ's self-giving love. Gracious God, give us generous hearts. Jesus Christ was rich, and yet he became poor for our sake, so that through his poverty we might become rich. And he gave his very life on the cross to provide living bread and living water for your people. Help us to grow daily in our love for Jesus, so that our hearts become strong enough to give away freely whatever is asked. Gracious God, give us generous May the seeds of faith planted by previous generations continue to grow and multiply among us here at St. Michael's. Help us to recognize ourselves not just as heirs of your abundant grace, but also as instruments of your grace. Inspire us to share with others the wealth you have entrusted to us and thereby plant seeds of hope for generations to come. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to St. Michael's Episcopal Church. It's so good to be with you all today. I especially want to welcome anyone visiting St. Michael's today, whether you're in the sanctuary with us or joining online. We're so glad that you're here. If you are online, we'd ask you to go to the homepage of our website where you can fill out an online communication form. And if you're here at the service, that same form is available to you, but I'd love just to meet you after the service and we can tell you how to get connected. We're so glad that you're with us here today and we'd love to tell you more about uh, this wonderful faith community. Now, as you're probably picking up or being reminded, uh, the month of October, we do focus in on stewardship. So uh, for those of you who are visiting, uh, this really is the focus for October. It's not an every Sunday affair. Uh, but it is really important, and part of what we do are invite members of the congregation to offer their witness, their testimony. So I'm going to ask Clark Whitty to come forward. As Clark does, uh, what I'll just tell you about Clark is he is a member of our vestry. He's the junior warden of this church. He's an all-around just wonderful guy, and, and, and Clark and his family are very dear to me in this church. So Clark, thank you for being here and sharing. Good morning. My name is Clark Whitty, and my wife's name is Karen. 
we've had the privilege of calling St. Michael's our church home since 2018. And I'm happy to be serving on my second year on our vestry. This morning, we are called to introspect about our giving and generosity. Jesus teaches us not to worry about our lives, what we will eat and what we will wear. He teaches us that birds don't store away their food in barns, and yet God feeds them through the winter. I reflect on that teaching all the time. But yet I do worry about money. How long our savings will last after the paychecks stop coming? How so much of it could be wiped away in market plunges? There are plenty of things to worry about when it comes to money. I do worry about it. But God has filled me with his generosity. He loves me unconditionally. I have firsthand experienced his transformative healing in my life. My wisdom is growing a little, but I'm still in the middle of my faith journey. And that journey is to follow Jesus and not my own desires and will. I'm still a long way from thinking of myself as a winter bird, but I'm keenly aware of my dependence on God. Why do Karen and I give to the church? St. Michael's mission is to extend grace and connection to every one. And we are behind that vision 100%. I counted 15 different events, excursions, and getting involved opportunities in this week's trumpet alone. If you look at our website, you'll see 14 different outreach organizations that we are backing. But it's the formation that I love the most. I hear people in this congregation still talking about programs like CHIRP, Curcio, and TAZE five to eight years later and can still hear the fire in their voice. These are life-changing experiences. They transform us. They allow us to give and receive grace and connection on an individual basis. I asked my son Christopher recently why, why we give to the church, and he said to enter into joy. Now maybe Chris has been reading Corinthians 2 and really understands that God loves a cheerful giver, but I think that's really Christopher being his honest self. You ought to see the joy emitting from his person when he gives to others. It is truly beautiful. Thank you for this time. Karen and I are increasing our giving to St. Michael's next year. We recognize God's abundant generosity and are called to emulate that generosity as we grow in his image. You may be able to give more than we are or you may not be able to give as much. The amount is not as important as our faithfulness to the journey of gratitude, prayer, and faith. Please join me in this journey. Thank you. Uh, Clark, thank you so much. I'm, I'm aware that whenever I ask people to stand up and to offer a testimony like that in worship, I'm inviting people into two things most human beings fear more than anything, um, public speaking and vulnerability disclosure around uh, faith and, and money. And so Clark just did that, such a beautiful job, and um, so grateful for that testimony. Uh, for those who uh, want to embark on uh, this journey with us the next four weeks. We're going to give you ample opportunities to do that. Uh, for the four Wednesdays in October, we're going to have an extra Bible study. That's going to be 6 p.m. on Wednesdays. That starts this week. I'll be leading that. 
We have a staff devotional that's going to be emailed out every Wednesday morning, and we have a written testimony from the Stewardship Commission that's going to come out every Thursday morning. And so I uh, just want to invite you to embrace this journey, not just on Sunday mornings, but for the month of October, and to know that we're going to be doing that together. Um, so one announcement that has nothing to do with um, stewardship or annual giving is that 4 p.m. this week, we have the celebration of the Feast of St. Francis with the blessing of the animals. It's one of the most fun services we do all year. It takes place in our courtyard. Uh, all animals are welcome to come and receive a blessing. Uh, I do take prayer requests, including prayers for the healing of poor animal behavior. Um, in terms of the efficacy of those prayers, I've received reports in the past that my prayers haven't worked, but we're going to keep trying. Uh, all animals are welcome, including rodents and reptiles. Uh, I just ask that when the time comes, you bring those to Mother Elizabeth for her to bless those animals. Um, those can go in her line. Um, so that's 4 p.m. today. Uh, as we go into Holy Communion, for those who have not been in church for a while or who are visiting, um, the usher will invite you to come forward. We are currently allowing the practice of intinction, which is when you take the bread and you dip it in the wine, but we're not drinking from the chalice at this time. And if you wish to skip uh, the chalice altogether, that is acceptable. Uh, is anyone uh, celebrating a birthday or an anniversary who wants to come forward for their blessing today? Birthdays and anniversaries. <clears throat> All right. Margarita, we have a birthday. Good. Is that Billy? <laughs> Billy, come on forward. We have a birthday? Uh -huh. Lovely. I'm so glad. And then Annie, you had a birthday, didn't you? Okay, well, come on forward for your blessing. You can line all up. This is perfect. All right, well, let us pray. Oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit be with you now. Remain with you always. Amen. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Friends, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God.
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company in heaven, who forever sing the glory of your name. Amen.
for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as the living members of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and sacraments of the body of God. Send us this time to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of your Son Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day and always. Amen.